Right. So, um, uh, biblical preaching, how's it coming along? Um, so, we've been looking at um, uh, the sermon construction, different aspects of the message. Um, I hope uh, you know it's um, it's kind of added something to what we already know. And also, some of us, I know, you know, we uh, we could be um, regularly ministering, you know, or you know, from time to time preaching and all that. So, um, some of the practical aspects of it, and also, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, scriptural part of it, uh, you know, the uh, the backing of so the the base being the you know the scripture, uh, it was the scripture, and uh, you know why we do what we do. Okay, I hope that it was helpful. Um, so we we're looking at chapter ten. We're looking into chapter ten, which is um, you know ministering God's word, the different forms of uh, ministry, right? The different ways of uh, uh, forms of delivery, rather, uh, different ways by which you can actually um, you know minister the word, uh, deliver the word. Okay, I can see your comments, John. Very helpful, getting my favorite topic, Jafina. Come on. Preach it, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, we, we have all these, uh, you know, different ways of uh, thing, and then uh, uh, you know, we, we we're also going to look at, um, you know, presentation, and I'm sure that that will also be a very helpful, uh, you know, uh, chapter uh, topic, um, and uh, we're going to be uh, looking at some, uh, you know, some. Um, inputs. We're going to be taking some inputs from you know, how the uh, TED talks are uh, are delivered. You know, if you look at the TED talks, uh, uh, you know we're not going to look at it right now. But if you if you if you look at TED talks, you know, technology, entertainment, and I think D stands for something else. Uh, but if you look at that forum and the and the kind of talks that are made, I mean, it's a it's not a religious one. You know, it's very secular. You know, various kinds of topics are there, but if you look at the presentation, you see that um, it's very uh, succinct. Um, it's very concise. It's very uh, impactful. Okay, uh, and it's a very short uh, uh, time, short duration. Actually, most of the talks are short duration. There, there are longer ones as well, right? But um, uh, and we can actually learn a lot uh, from. Uh, the way they approach the topic, the way they handle, uh, you know, uh, present handle the whole presentation. So we're going to be looking at that also. You know, looking at some inputs from that uh, when it comes to the presentation. Okay. Um, so when we, uh, I mean, when you look at uh, the different ways of delivery, you know, just to review a few things that we saw last class, we we said that uh, you know you can you can preach it, you can say it. Like how you always do, you can just speak that out, convey the message. You can make it, uh, can dramatize it. Um, you can use an illustrated sermon, where um, you know, uh, for illustrations, for a, for to illustrate the point, to make it clear, you have object lessons. You could, uh, you know, you could actually do things to props and all that to uh, bring home or make the. Um, uh, Make the message even more impactful. You could use it as a sto story form. Uh, that's one of the other things that we saw. That you know, if the message is, um, you know, it can be just like a story, like a whole story of a life history of a person, and it can end in an altar call. You know, I, I once heard a testimony uh, shared that way. You know, the person who shared was this talking about. Um, uh, you know, he, he said it was, uh, I'm sure, you know, it's very common now, uh, or maybe you've heard it many times, but uh, for me at that point in time, it was very, uh, very new and very novel way of preaching. You know, I just hadn't heard anyone uh, share it like that. So it was, uh, the person was talking about, uh, uh, about a person, right, about this young man and how he grew up and all that. So he's talking about his life. And then finally ended by saying, you know, and and then it was a, it was a very very, uh, uh, what, how should I put it, very uh, difficult life, very challenging life, and a very radical transformation as well, right? So he shared all that, and then said, you know, that person whom you just heard about being described is me. Okay, so it was like everybody like went, wow, you know, amazing uh, how uh, how God can do 
such a thing in a person's life, how it can change a person's life. So it was very, very impactful, right? So it can be, um, it can be a story form, it can be, you know, props on stage can be used, can, people can be props. You can sing it out as well. Uh, if, you, if you are gifted in, in that area, you can sing it out as well, excuse me. You can use visuals, you know, PowerPoints, videos, uh, to enhance the presentation and not to substitute it, right? Um, we are very mindful of that, just to enhance, uh, you know, highlight. Um, it can be enacted. It can be like a play. It can be enact enacted, the whole message, and somebody can come at the end and and kind of wrap things up. Uh, you know, I've, we've seen plays where uh, uh, at the end, right, uh, all the you know, people in the play, the whole cast, you know, at a at a particular moment, just freeze, freeze. You know, they freeze, um, they're standing still, and then the speaker walks in, you know, walks right through the cast, and maybe you know, he's talking about each character in the cast, and very quickly, you know, summing up the whole thing, and then uh, ending the message. You know, seen that uh, happen, and uh, that can be very, very uh, powerful as well. Okay. Um, then, of course, we saw it can be a talk show. It can be an interaction with the audience. It can be a discussion where the it's like a typical talk show that you see on you know uh, in in these talk show programs. <clears throat> questions, discussions, um, maybe audience asking some questions, uh, and and then you end it. Right. Um, okay. So uh, going further into different forms of delivery. Right. Uh, we see some categories, like um, if you look at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35, uh, we see, this is what we read, then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every every sickness and every disease among the people. Okay, Romans 12, 6 to 8, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, uh, sorry, liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Okay. So um, different uh, things that we see that the Lord Jesus preached, he taught and then he ministered in healing, in deliverance, and so on. Uh, Romans 6 talks about the different gifts uh, according to the grace that is given to us. And the prophecy is mentioned there. Teaching is mentioned there. Ministering, um, uh, exhortation, etc. Right? Exhortation, encouragement, and, and also other things like leadership and giving and so on. Okay. So, so we see that when it comes to delivering a message, it can be, it can be preaching. Okay. Now, preaching is uh, proclaiming, like we saw earlier proclaiming uh, it's a declaration it's an exhortation it can be an encouragement it, it is an inspirational thing it can motivate people to action right so um, so that is how uh, you know that, that form of delivery is it's it's proclamation it's declaring the truth of who god is it's declaring something of uh, and and it's a it's a call to change Right? It is a call to change. It is a call to action. It is a. It's been. It's an in, inspiration, um, uh, uh, leading to conviction. Right? So all that uh, is, 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 is. We could say that preaching involves all that. Okay. So the person who preaches, the preacher, normally, okay. So is usually lively. Because it's you know inspirational, it's motivational, uh, it's a call to action. So uh, normally, when the person is preaching, you know, it is preaching is lively. The preacher is lively, uh, forceful, a uh, lot of energy. Um, you know, it's uh, a lot of application. Okay, this is what you must do, and here are three things that you can do. Here are ten things that you can do, um, and not much of explanation. Okay, uh, not much of going into the intricacies of why, how, where, not necessarily. 
right? Um, it's it's a call, you know. It's 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 from the heart of God, and this is what God feels. This is what you need to do, you know. Um, so a uh, lot of uh, illustrations, a uh, lot of uh, examples, and and a, and a call to action, basically, right? And uh, and typically, you know, this would we would say that the ministry of an evangelist, kind of an, an, an evangelist ministers a word. Um, you know, it is uh, most times it is preaching, right? There is a uh, there is a need for conviction of sin. There is a you know declaration of what God uh, what could be the consequence of that, and there is a declaration of the you know uh, about the heart of God towards sinners and uh, towards the world that is heading to a destiny apart from God. So it's a you know, it's it's a call to action. At the end of it, it's like you come, and you need to come to the savior. You need to be saved, and this is what you need to do to be saved. And there's not um, there, def- uh, there. I mean, it's it's you know, most cases there is not getting into the questions of, you know, into the depths of, uh, you know, why why is something like this? Why is the concept, uh, or how, and all that. So. Uh, there's not much of that. I'm not saying that it will not be there, but uh, generally, you know, it's not much uh, going into the depth of it, right? So that is uh, when it comes to preaching. Okay. Now, when it comes to teaching, which is again another mode of delivery of the message, communication of the message, right? Now, it's it is different. Okay. The Lord Jesus, we see that in scripture that we read just now, Jesus went about. It talks about preaching, you know, 935, Matthew 935 talks about preaching. Uh, it also talks about how he taught, right? He says, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, um, teaching in their synagogues, and so on. You see, you know, there was a different environment. Uh, there was a synagogue, and it was a place where people came to, and then they met for a purpose of worship, and so on. And and it was a setting for teaching. Not that he didn't teach anywhere else, but uh, you know, Matthew nine thirty five clearly says that he taught in the synagogues, and then he preached. Uh, it is um, he preached in uh, the gospel of the kingdom, and uh, he did that in different places. Also, he traveled. He went to all the cities and villages, uh, and he healed every sickness. He ministered in healing, and. Uh, in the supernatural, right? So when it comes to teaching, so we know that teaching, the first of all, it is it involves answering some of those questions. You know, it's it's not necessary that the people would ask questions. Well, that that is also possible, um, and it it is also there in a typical, you know, like a classroom teaching, or um, uh, or an informal teaching session, right? Uh, or even a structured teaching session, there could be a time, you know, set apart for questions and uh, from the audience, from the hearer, right? Um, but otherwise, you know, they, they, it involves uh, asking certain questions by the by the teacher himself or herself, you know, asking those or stating those questions. You know, if you want to ask why, then you know this is why, right? And the person gets into the details of. Uh, Answering, right? getting into the details of uh, 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 the nuts and bolts of why and how and where and so on. Okay, so that uh, so in order to do that, you know that um, the 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 tempo or the pace at which um, something is stated, the space at which. Uh, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, I think temporarily, uh, said something happened. Okay, I'm back. So yeah, we were talking about the pace at which um, you know uh, teaching happens. So the pace at which uh, the, a teaching session, you know, the pace goes down or it slows down because you are 
getting into a lot more details, a lot more descriptions, and also your you know answering those questions. Okay, it's not so much there would be a call to action also, but then it's not so much uh, just stating something, proclaiming something, declaring something, and and you know and waiting for a response or asking for a response. It is going into some uh, some depth, going into some details, um, explaining, and also you know ensuring that the person, the audience or the hearer understands. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of explanation, in-depth study, and there's a uh, you know, taking the audience from a place of uh, not understanding or to a place of uh, uh, understanding it, some things, right? So, um, so it's it's a, it's a slower. It's a, I would say you know sometimes it it is a longer process also. Okay, uh, it takes slightly more time. Okay, so if you look at the person who's doing it again, this is not typically. Um, you know, uh, we're just kind kind of stereotyping it, but then, uh, you know, generally this is how a teacher, while a person while teaching, may not be necessarily very exuberant or as animated or energetic as the preacher, right? Because, but you, because if you look at the, you know, the the mode or the 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 uh, you know what is being done you see that there's a difference right one is proclaiming declaring okay this is what it is so there's a declaration with all intensity and passion and so on right whereas when it comes to teaching they are going deeper and you're asking questions there's a lot of explanations and so uh, need not be you know the person need not be in very very energetic need not be very exuberant Again, we are generalizing, right? Um, and so the goal is to bring understanding. Okay, the goal is to, you know, so which means I cannot just say certain things and move on. I, I'm stating it. I'm uh, I'm answering the questions that I raised, and I'm bringing understanding, and uh, and I'm I'm also getting a response in that sense. You know, do you understand? And are you with me? And uh, you know, uh, I hope you understood this. I hope you're getting the grasp of it. Okay, and there's a response from the hearer. Yes, yeah, so, or or maybe something needs to be restated, revisited again. Okay, because so it sends that. Okay, uh, the person is saying a little confused. Or maybe not there yet. Not understood it yet. Okay, so uh, so when it comes to um, you know people who are gifted in teaching, people who are maybe um, there are the in pastoral kind of a ministry, then, uh, well, there's a lot more teaching that's happening, okay, rather than an itinerant uh, evangelist or, um, you know, that kind of a ministry, right? So, so we see the difference. Now, both have their, um, um, both have their objective, right? Both have the end result, and. Uh, and sometimes it's a mix of both. Okay, in in a message, sometimes it's like certain parts of the message are preached, are just stated, declared, proclaimed, and certain aspects of the message are taught. Maybe you know there's a declarative aspect to it, and also there is a, you know, there's there's something that is. Um, where you're going in depth and you're teaching and and so on. So. Um, so you see that you know, and you can do both, right? Um, and also, as we prepare for the message, okay, here are some things to ask. You know, you can ask the Lord, Lord, what should I do? You know, uh, now you all you know prepared the title and everything. Uh, so you can ask the Lord, Lord, what should I do? You know, should I teach or should this be preached? Okay, well, it, we're saying okay, it's a ten-minute thing. So, uh, should I teach? You know, if it, if I need to teach, then you know, what are those things that I need to highlight, and uh, how deep should I go, right, uh, in teaching? So, we can ask the Lord as we're preparing. Okay, God, should I preach it? Should I teach it? Should I do a bit of both, right? Um, so, what what do you want me to do? And uh, and the thing is that um, the Lord. You know, uh, anoints us um, according to uh, according to the message. You know, 
if he anoints us to preach well what does what does that mean that means that his presence and power is empowering us for that task right? that is the anointing right the presence and power of the holy spirit so he is uh, empowering us for that task um, to carry out the task in a particular way so there's an anointing for preaching to there's an anointing for the message to be proclaimed declared and there's an anointing from the holy spirit same holy spirit uh, for, uh, in, in order for the message to be taught okay um, so there's more revelation understanding and there is also the anointing for uh, to get into explanations um, there's the anointing for and and he basically you know he's just revealing certain things right? he's, there's a lot more revelation there's a lot more uh, understanding there's a lot more depth to the revelation and so on so um, so we are able to move in that or flow in that right? so um, so that's the thing to to ask God God do you, Lord do you want me to uh, preach it do you want me to you know teach it um, and then you know the the flow of the anointing will really determine the flow of how it, the message needs to be delivered okay um, so even those who consider themselves to be you know I, I, I can I'm a preacher and you know we don't have to slot ourselves in that we can ask the Lord Lord you know, you, you deal the I mean you uh, determine the flow how do you want this to be done right and typically in a, in a pastoral kind of a ministry there would be both right there would be both um, because there is a need for exhortation um, there is a need for um, a teaching as well getting people grounded in the word of god rooted in the word of god established in these truths you know maybe layer by layer you know as people over and over again because basically it's the same uh, same audience more or less right for uh, every meeting okay Okay, so the third thing uh, we also see that uh, in, in Romans 12 it talks about prophesying according to the grace that is given. Okay, so uh, when it comes to prophesying, okay, so the message is inspired by the Holy Spirit, um, comes by revelation. Uh, maybe it's a prophetic message, it's a prophetic word could be a prophetic song a prophetic prayer prophetic action and so on right so all this um, prophetic in nature so inspired uh, moved led by the Holy Spirit maybe it can it can be you know something spontaneous happening there at you know you, you didn't prepare it you know you didn't plan that and it's you know you're just God is just taking you into that right you didn't flow into it or it could be even you know when you're preparing there's a you know download uh, there's a revelation you know. i was really inspired um, you know this is what a uh, pastor shared once uh, about um, this many years ago um, for a christmas message right <coughs> um, so he um, so he was preparing and then uh, there was no you know he, uh, there was a of course he could always preach your message based on you know what he knew what he has studied and but he wanted something new and then uh, waiting on god okay what do i what do i share um well no answer so is this you know so during the week nothing so saturday has come nothing uh sunday morning nothing so anyway he 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 knew what he could fall back on but uh, he really wanted you know uh, something uh, from God, uh, Christmas morning, Christmas. So he was, he was sharing about how uh, you know he was waiting, nothing happening, and then the worship was over, and uh, it was time for him to go. Uh, announcements, everything was over. It's time for him to go, and then uh, and uh, you know those days it was just one location. I think I mean, uh, you know. So from the from where he was sitting, he's normally seated at the first row. So from from where he was sitting to the podium was about maybe three four steps at the most, maybe less. But uh, he's saying that how you know in that time, you know in that three to four steps, he got up, and in those three to four steps, there was a a download of the message, right? 
and uh, and this is actually a chapter in the book Kingdom Builders. Okay, that entire message is in that uh, chapter. It's a chapter called uh, the Mary Miracle. You know, if you go through that, so um, so this happened in those three four steps that he took from the front row to the podium to share. Okay, a, a prophetic inspired download uh, of message. So he said, you know, as he was, as he began, you know, uh, to speak, uh, he just saw the message unfold, or he just heard himself, you know, uh, speaking uh, those point by point. And then he was, he was, he was, he was also saying that, um, I'm talking about Pastor Ashish, of course, and he was also saying that, um, well, uh, you know, people had no clue. People, people thought maybe uh, spent hours preparing, and you know. Uh, so he said, uh, "Well, I was hearing it for the first time. He was hearing it for the first time as he was preaching it." So then uh, he preached the message, and then he, uh, yeah, he went back home and then wrote it down. You know, uh, because he didn't have any notes, nothing. So he went back home and he wrote it down, and uh, and then. You know, it was, um, yeah, he had that outline then. So it was a uh, you know, completely different way, right? So, so, well, prophesying again, you know, it was a prophetic word, right? Uh, God inspired uh, at that moment. So it wasn't pre-planned, nothing premeditated. Um, and then that was a prophetic word. So, well, the prophetic word can come as a pre-planned thing. You no know, need to mention that also. A, a prophetic song, a prophetic prayer, a you know, prophetic action, um, something that's pre not planned earlier, not premeditated, or it could be something, um, you know, as you're preparing. So which means that uh, as you're preparing for it, God gives you, it's a prophetic uh, download of revelation, what should be preached, and you note it down and then you do it. Okay, But it's prophetic in any case, right? So uh, we have, and a prophetic action again. You know, I remember once there was a, uh, there's, a, there's a, we had a guest minister, and he came, and he was quite prophetic. And uh, so there was a prophetic action in the sense, you know, he saw something in the prophetic realm, and then he's uh, kind of uh, there was an action which he led the both pastor and his wife Amy to do. Right? He said, uh, yes, put ask them to stand. Uh, you know, with their hands out like that, you know, as of holding a sword and you know, standing. And then uh, behind Pastor was Amy, you know, her back to Pastor. And again, she was also standing with the, you know, hand out and uh, like as of holding a sword. And then he said, you know, this is how it is. This is how I see in the spirit that, uh, you know, you've got the sword out and you are, you know, uh, facing this direction and, you know, you're all alert and, um, you know, uh, discerning and alert and you know you got your sword out so you're ready for battle in that direction but whatever your blind spot is wherever you can't see you know uh, that's where your wife amy is you know and she is alert in this direction so you both of you uh you know depending on each other covering up each other's blind spots and spiritually being alert and sharp and wielding your swords that's how i you know that's how I see in the spirit. So it was a, uh, it was an act, prophetic act as well. You know he saw them, he called them both forward, uh, up, and then uh, in front, and he did that. So when we saw that as a congregation, uh, it was a very powerful time. You know when we saw that, it was um, uh, how should I put it? You know when we visualize it, it was very powerful. And we saw you know something. Uh, I could sense something shift in the. Uh, in the in the area atmosphere, right? There's a there's a surge of faith that happened. There was a uh, there was a you know uh, uh, with that revelation came a lot of assurance uh, and so on, right? So a prophetic it could be a prophetic act as well, something that you do, uh, something that you demonstrate, and we see in scripture, right? In Ezekiel, Isaiah, we see that uh, God asked them to do something and they did it, right? Um, and it was a prophetic act. And even in the book of Acts, we see you know, Agabus, uh, the prophet, um, uh, coming to Saul, Paul, and then he, he takes the, the belt and he ties it. And he says, you know, this is what uh, the Holy Spirit is showing me that, uh, you know, this is what will happen to the owner of the belt. You know, very, very dramatic, very theatrical. And... Uh, 
he does that right uh, i'm just um and and then paul knew okay uh, th that this is what change would await um in the in the future as he goes but then you know he will he's, he's not mindful of that he, he was uh you know he he was forewarned but then he knew that he would face that but he still went so um was it Agabus or is it uh, yeah i'm just thinking um anyway yeah so uh, so we see that um um uh, so prophetic act very powerful you visualize you see and uh, you know something that's uh, that that is also a mode of uh, delivery uh, right so uh, the message can be delivered in all these all these ways so uh, the thing is to be open right now that you know okay uh, it can be uh, it can be either of these so to be open and to say it's a risk that you're taking, right? Um, and uh, and also, you know, to be open to God and saying, God, you know, what is it? As you're preparing, uh, how do you want me to do this? How do you want me to do this? So you, you see, you're, you're engaging with God. You know, we're not distancing ourselves from from God. We're not distancing from the Holy Spirit. We are communing with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we are talking. We are uh, talking to Him, having this conversation with Him. We are involving God. You know all this, and it's not just our human our own own uh, you know own flesh or human understanding or skill or ability. God will use all that. You know, God will use our experience. God will use our understanding, uh, whatever you know, academic thing that we have you know over the years, whatever we have. All, God will use all that uh, for His glory, and uh, we are involving Him. We are opening our hearts and saying, God, you know, I want you to be part of this. Um, it's not about me. It's not. About it's about you, God, but I, I just want to be faithful. Uh, I want to be a faithful spokesperson, and right? I want to be a faithful representative uh, of your kingdom, right? And uh, uh, I want to co-labor with you. Right? We have been invited to co-labor with Him, right? Um, and 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 the thing is this: right? we see in uh, Hebrews that He's faithful to uh, to watch over His word um, to perform it, and right? He's faithful to do that, right? And, uh, and we see in the book of Acts also that uh, he confirmed, which means that uh, he said yes, he attested to the preaching of the word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Right? So that is what he did. So, uh, so God is uh, faithful to do it. God is faithful to watch over his word, to perform it. He wants to bear witness uh, to the word with signs, wonders, miracles. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's best for us if we involve him right? if we um, yield to his leading and um, uh, and give that priority over everything else right? and be mindful and be sensitive about um, you know his leading his ideas his thoughts his revelation and uh, making note of that okay um, so uh, yeah let's let's move on to chapter 11 okay so that that brings us to the end of chapter ten. Chapter eleven is talking about uh, when it, uh, again when it comes to ministering God's word to to have an expectation, okay, uh, to have an expectation of uh, you know uh, of the fruit of it or the end result of it, end result of what you're ministering. You know, many times uh, sometimes when we when we get started, we are so uh, um, What's the word? We're not, we're we're kind of preoccupied with the ministering aspect of it, you know, with the delivery of it. Uh, you know, we just want to present it the right way. We're so, you know, we are preoccupied with thinking about that, and then we we present it and we are done with it, and we're like, "Oof, I'm done. That's it." <laughs> you know, uh, I remember the first few the first few times. I think uh, uh, first major, you know. Uh, uh, I don't know time of ministry. Uh, then I, I was just so glad that it was done, and I just called pastor and I said, you know, uh, okay, that brings us to the end of this message. So I just called pastor to come and pray and close. So you know, I was so done with the message. I just wanted to hand over everything back to him. You know, um, so we we could be in that place, right? We are, okay, here's the word. Here's the word you give me. I prepared. I've prayed everything, and uh, I'm done with it. And that is it. The end. Right. But the thing is to have an expectation of 
God, now that there is the the mess, your word has gone out. You know, I want to see more. Okay, I want to know more, God. What would be the consequence of that? Okay, to have the faith and to have that expectation. Okay, now I, I want to see that uh, bearing fruit. And your word does not return void, so I want to see that bearing fruit. Uh, in in people's lives, you know, here are the hearers, here are the people, and you orchestrated, uh, and I've come here and shared, and it could be an informal setting, home group, it could be you know two or three, whatever, whatever be the setting. We're not talking about you know big uh, you know audience alone. We're just talking about everything, you know, whatever be the environment, whatever be the setting, and so we you know you shared and uh, and. The thing is to have that expectation, right? Have that expectation, have that faith. And say, God, what is it? What is it that I can expect? Okay, so, so here are some things. What what fruit can we expect through the ministry of the word? First of all, change. Okay, change. Um, change in circumstance, change in people's lives, right? Why? Because it's the word of God which is alive, which is powerful, which is living, and we've not shared, as long as we've not shared some humanistic message, you know, you shared something that's uh, that's the eternal truth, uh, maybe some principles, maybe some some practical aspects, but, but coming from that, uh, from the eternal word, right, you share that, so uh, you can expect, what fruit can we expect? We can expect change. Right. Change from how things are to how things can be because of the word, right? Because of the work of the Holy Spirit in response to people receiving the word, right? So, um, change, maybe a, another word to use is transformation, right? So, we can, uh, two things, we can actually expect change to happen right then and there, right? Instant, instantaneously, expecting in faith uh, because you've handled the word, right? So instantaneous change. Another word to help us understand that better is transformation, right? So which means radically change. Um, so we can expect transformation, right? transformation in people's lives. In in what areas? It can be in well in the area of their maybe with their bodies maybe something needs to set right in their bodies maybe you know it is healing some symptoms there physically there's something wrong something not aligned so there's a need physically there's a need maybe materially like right? um, financially you know there's a need in the physical realm in other words so we can expect fruit we can expect transformation in that Okay, so certain things to be broken down, certain things to be established, rooted, certain things to be uprooted, okay, whatever it is. Okay, um, so it'll involve the mechanics of that would involve all that, you know, uprooting, rooting, uh, establishing, all that, uh, burning away, maybe some chains being broken, some weights being removed, some doors being opened, some doors being shut. Um, there's a cleaning up happening, renewing, you know, uh, uh, I mean, things being burnt away, right? Uh, some very hard decisions, whatever. Right? But we can expect that kind of a transformation. Say, God, you know, I want that. Right? It could be in the area of the mind, area of the soul, right? Uh, maybe things to do with their thoughts, thought life, thoughts, imaginations, thought patterns certain behavioral patterns because of these thought patterns, certain things that are going in cycle, you know, over and over and over again in the mind. Maybe there's an oppression in the mind, right? There's a heaviness in the mind that just won't go away. We can expect change, and transformation in that area. And it can be in, in the realm of the spirit, right? In the spirit, maybe there's a need for you know, a deposit of that truth, bringing illumination to the spirit. You know, it's like the lights being turned on on the inside. This maybe something. It's like a fire that's just cleansing, right? 
and uh, you know all that is that maybe there's just you know one one more layer of truth being added reinforcing the truth that they already have a revelation that you know they've already received just reinforcing and that could be the you know that could be the tipping point of certain decision being made maybe right that could be the tipping point of some some drastic changes happening in their lives right um, where the where faith is birthed to make some choices right so um, we can expect change change in their bodies change in their minds change in their spirit okay um, the other thing we can expect is growth okay now transformation is one thing it can be instantaneous it can be a, it can be a process growth again you know we see the instantaneous thing because uh, maybe they reached a tipping point and then you know, you know we see that something that's visible right uh, but it 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 also it means that it can also be a, it's a process right? we see the maturity you know um, and we see the clarity and, uh, and 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 paul writes to timothy he says you know give yourself entirely so that your progress may be evident to all right um let me just uh, share that uh, scripture um it's in yeah um first timothy 4 right verse 16 take heed to yourself and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing them you will save uh, sorry uh, uh, i think uh, it's um um that's a different verse uh, yeah, the verse before that, sorry, verse 15. Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, and that your progress may be evident to all. Uh, and then he talks about taking heed. So verse 15, 4 and verse 15. Um, wholehearted surrender, wholehearted yielding, that your progress may be uh, evident to all. It's so visible, it's tangible. So progress, growth, maturity, right? So uh, growing in spiritual maturity, growing in Christ-likeness, um, growing in knowledge, growing in understanding. Right. So when we talk about growth, we're talking about all that, and and especially when it comes to spiritual maturity. So we're talking character here. We're talking Christ-likeness. Right. Um, so all those things are uh, well. We know it, it. It's it's not overnight. Right, it's uh, uh, it's it's a process, and uh, maybe you have the privilege of you know being there the entire journey or the entire process, right from start to finish in that person's life, or it could be at a crucial stage or some stage in their life, right, where God uses us to bring in that spiritual maturity growth in spiritual maturity right so so we can expect that we can pray for that and ha have faith and expectation for that saying god you know i know that there are different people different levels of maturity and god i'm i'm just expecting that fruit as well okay so the other thing could be um to to helping people walk in victory you know uh, maybe there's a there's a walk of defeat there's a cycle of defeat um there's a you know, when you say cycle, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a thing that's going over and over again as never-ending uh, cycle, spiral of defeat. Uh, but God uses his word and uses the message and the messenger with the messenger to bring in a change to that. Right? So that that cycle of defeat is broken and they're walking in victory now um, in maybe some areas, maybe all areas of their lives. Okay, so um, as they engage with the word, as they receive the word, um, they're walking in victory. Okay, and uh, and also things like their identity and what is rightfully theirs, what, whatever the enemy has stolen, or whatever the enemy has deceived them into thinking that okay, that is not for them. You know, it's amazing uh, when people realize, hey, this is mine. Right. There's a realization. This is mine. This is God given. I have a right to it because it's my inheritance. 
uh, it's not being withheld from me it's actually god is extending his hands and he's you know he's giving it to me uh, i just i need to receive it now i need to take it in i, I need to possess my inheritance right so there's so much of faith there's so much of freedom there's so much of you know uh, a wiping away of all forms of condemnation and saying that okay god has done it he is giving it to me uh, and i'm i'm receiving and i'm walking in it i choose to walk in it right so um so when when we bring in the word and when we share the word and with that expectation i right, that is something that we can expect as well saying and pray and and uh, and uh, minister with that uh, with, with that in our hearts you know with that faith that yes i want to see this happen okay and also you know uh, well the list the list can go on but uh, but also um, expecting god to confirm his word okay expecting god to confirm his word okay let's look at um, a couple of verses um, acts chapter yeah acts chapter 2 and uh, yeah, Acts chapter 2, uh, uh, verse 47. Okay, first let's read that. No, we see that um, they taught, uh, they, they, this is uh, talking about the early church, that there was signs and wonders and all that. Verse 47 says, And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Okay, so there's a, there's something that God is doing right, in uh, in response to whatever ministry the apostles were doing, and uh, and they're in, involved in, in doctrine, teaching, and signs and wonders and everything. And it says that the Lord added to the church um, those uh, who were being saved, right? And then it also, you know, when we when we look at um, um, yeah, um, let's, let's move on to Acts chapter 4. And uh, so this is what um, uh, the, the people are praying. Acts chapter 4, verse 23 onwards. Uh, uh, it was 24 onwards. You know, they raised their voice and they prayed to God. And this was their prayer. And, uh, and in return, or in response to that prayer, we see certain things happening. Right. Verse forty, verse thirty-three says, "And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all." Okay, great power, they gave uh, witness to the resurrection, and great grace was upon them all. You know, and and before that, they pray. You know, verse thirty, they pray, saying, "Lord, you know." Uh, you um, let your servants let them speak your word with boldness, and saying, you know, um, you confirm God, you things. Um, you know, I mean, they're saying, you know, whatever your, uh, you know, Lord, you grant to the servants, so your servants that they speak with all boldness, they speak your word, and they say, verse thirty, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Okay, so you know that that was their prayer. Okay, and then we we go on to Hebrews and um, Hebrews two and uh, verse four. It talks about how God was bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to uh, His own will. It's talking about the word that was spoken. Uh, you know that salvation that is not neglected and talking about God bearing witness. So we see that when we preach the word, when we minister the word, this is something that we can expect, the fruit that we can expect as well, that God would be a witness, that we would confirm with signs, wonders. You know, this is what the disciples prayed for, God, that you would do this. Right? So we can, we can pray, we can expect. The same kind of uh, things. You know, this is the this is the end result. 
Okay, so we don't just preach and just pull away, but we preach with the expectation that we will see this happen. Okay, okay, so we'll we'll stop here, and then we'll continue next class again with the same topic of expecting fruit right, in preaching. Okay, thank you. God bless. We'll see you again. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor.